First, I would like to confess that I have been wrestling with a lot of deep sorrow before the Lord for a long time until posting this. During that time, I have been saying that repentance is impossible if you receive the clear liquid. However, the Lord helped me to realize that the people who have received that are still at a stage where it is possible to repent, and so I want to share up to where that stage is and also what that reason is. This is an important video, so please watch it until the end, and I encourage each person to ask the Lord themselves about this content. And if you receive the same answer, I ask you to please share that there is a chance to repent with those who are in confusion because of taking the clear liquid. When people would ask if it is possible to repent after receiving the clear liquid or ask questions related to that, I would say that it was possible to repent in cases for a person who received it without knowing or for those whom their guardian made the choice, such as the mentally ill, the elderly, and the young children. Besides that, there can be situations where it was forcefully received, and other than that, there are personal conditions and situations that are different. Therefore, we cannot judge anyone. I have briefly revealed this through videos, and there were also people I have conversed with through the comments about this. Nevertheless, I increasingly had a heart of deep sorrow as I thought to myself if it really is impossible to repent aside from these people and I could only cry quietly by myself when that deep sorrow would strongly push forward once in a while. I think I can understand a little bit of the prayers of the Old Testament prophets that mourned and lamented before God. Every day, like them, I would say, My beloved Lord, I am so very sorrowful. It is because I would be asking the Lord in lamentation. Lord, how did the world change so suddenly like this? Why do people not believe even after hearing the words, Mark of the Beast? Is it really impossible to repent, except for the people who have received it without knowing anything? Is there no hope for those who took lightly the words, Mark of the Beast? Is there really no way for them to live? I kept asking over and over again because my heart was burning. Then one day, the Holy Spirit let the word free will come to my mind. The word free will was magnified in my head. Lord, that is right. They still have their free will. If that's so, can't they repent as long as they have their free will? Lord, please let me know this exactly. Oh, my beloved Lord, I'm sad and very sad. How did this many children of the Lord take this lightly? I meditated on the characteristic of free will that the Lord put in my mind while in sorrow. However, once the mark of the beast is received, Lucifer's name is sealed inside the body, and because of my thought that God's image is changed into the beast's image, in the end, I went back to the conclusion that you can't repent. When I meditated deeply on the characteristic of free will, joy came upon me because the chance of repentance could be possible. But when I thought about the characteristic of the mark of the beast, despair found me again. So as time went on, my sorrowful heart grew bigger, and from some time ago, whenever I would sleep or do anything, I was flooded in sadness and could not get out of these thoughts. Stronger sorrow than before would come. My beloved Lord, I am sad and so very sad. Tears would only come out at times with this lamentation, which became a habit. I hung on to the Lord. Lord, why can I not understand your word? I can perceive the Holy Spirit's voice quickly for some things, but why is this taking so long? Lord, please tell me, help me to understand. As I was saying this, I quietly pleaded my sadness alone with the Lord that day as well, and asked and meditated again, and waited for the Lord to say something. At that time, the Lord let me realize in my heart that I could not understand this because I could not get out of the frame of my own thoughts. In other words, the knowledge of the mark of the beast in my thoughts were blocking me. So I laid down the thoughts and knowledges that were blocking the voice of the Holy Spirit and repented. I checked to see if there were any other obstacles and repented of everything that I could think of and started to ask the Lord again. At that time, the Lord gave me the words, the last tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I was surprised, because in the past also, He let it come to my mind that the mark of the beast was the last tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I asked Him, Lord, this is the last tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then this means that repentance is impossible. Because the Lord put it in my mind to compare it with the mark of the beast at that time, I started to compare. First, in the Garden of Eden, when Adam ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, his spirit instantly died. So I asked, Lord, the mark of the beast is also the last tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then if it is received, 
Isn't it correct that the spirit instantly dies? The Lord gave me the realization that of course it is correct that the spirit dies, but it does not die instantly like it did in the Garden of Eden. When I asked, then when does that person's spirit die? The Lord let me realize that when I install a computer, it takes time and happens step by step. The reason they are making it to where people have to keep getting the first, second, third is because they cannot install all the programs they want all at once. That is why every time the clear liquid is received, another program is installed, and as the things that were installed become activated, the light of that spirit gradually becomes dark, and at one point, the light of that spirit also completely turns off. That time is the point where that spirit dies, and is the moment where complete judgment has come upon that person. He let me realize that this moment is the stage where a human's free will is removed, and they can no longer repent. I asked the Lord, if that's so, what happens to the image of God? Lord, Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and their spirits died. However, because they had the image of God, repentance was possible. But for the people who received the clear liquid, the image of God is changed into the beast's image. Then isn't it impossible to repent? What the Lord gave to me from this question is that human is an image of God that is made of spirit, soul, and body. Among them, the body was created from dirt, and the spirit and soul were created by God breathing life into them. Here, the physical body belongs to the physical world, and so the clear liquid can damage the genes, but it cannot damage the spirit and soul that belongs to the spiritual realm. So, through the attacks of Satan, the body can be destroyed, but the spirit and soul that God breathed life into and created retains the image of God as it is, and also, because repentance works in the soul, it is possible to repent while we still live on the earth and as long as we have free will. The problem is that through this substance, if free will is lost, the stage will be reached where you cannot repent. Therefore, you must avoid getting the third, fourth, fifth, etc. with your whole life. And now, because it comes out disguised through various forms, this is a time where you cannot take anything. The news has reported that the white liquid to be put in the nose has also been developed. Because this has the same form as the nose test, as long as the news has officially announced this, the nose test can also count as the mark of the beast, so please be careful. Anyway, because this clear liquid belongs to the physical world, it takes time to contaminate the body and take over the brain. Until then, we have time to repent. Still, even now, after many people have received the clear liquid, they can praise God and worship and pray, which signifies that they are still children of God. There are those even among pastors who have anointing in their sermons despite receiving the clear liquid. The anointing of the word cannot come from Satan. This is evidence that the Holy Spirit has not yet left them, and these kinds of occurrences proves that they still have free will inside of them. In other words, this means that Satan could not yet completely conquer the temple. That is why there's still hope. However, if the beast program is completely installed inside the body and the brain is controlled, that person becomes a being that is dominated by someone. At that time, free will will be removed and only Satan's presence will be felt. That is why when the time comes when people who haven't gotten the mark of the beast are turned in, they will be at the forefront in turning in their brothers and sisters, parents, children, and their neighbors to be put to death. They themselves may think that they have free will, but in actuality, because that isn't the case, they are able to turn in their loved ones. Even now, we can see many people around us whose personalities or attitudes have changed a lot compared to before. They do not know that they themselves are changing. However, I think that they will change like that little by little, without realizing it themselves, and at some point, will lose their free will. Therefore, they must repent while they still have their free will. They must repent while they are still able to praise and worship God and pray. They must repent that they have received it without knowing, and that they took it lightly even though they heard the words that it was the mark of the beast. And also, they must repent for compromising because of their job. I thought that repentance was completely impossible for cases where someone knowingly took the mark of the beast and compromised with their own will, because I believed that it was a complete falling away. However, the Lord reminded me of a scene where Peter denied Jesus three times but repented with tears. Again, he reminded me of the Israelites he forgave and restored who had also committed adultery by worshipping idols countless times as long as they repented and returned. 
The clear liquid is also idolatry, allowing the beast's DNA and contaminated substances inside the body, and is a sin that defiles the temple. This is a falling away that denies that God is the only God. Nevertheless, just like God forgave Peter and the Israelites when they repented and returned, He will save their spirit and soul, too, from the judgment if they repent. To God, there is no different repentance that He specially accepts. He forgives any sin if you repent. The problem is that we do not repent on our side, and that is why it leads to judgment. The Lord reminded me of the word in Hebrews, where there is only one sin that cannot be repented for, which is a sin unto death. Hebrews 6, 4-6 It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away to be brought back to repentance, because to their loss they are crucifying the Son of God all again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. The person here who can no longer repent is not someone who is an idolater or in a state of apostasy. It is a case in which a person who has experienced the love and truth of the cross of the Lord and communed with the Holy Spirit and had a deep faith life, committed apostasy, and went out into the secular world. To put it simply, this is talking about a person who has mature faith that backslides. Then, does it mean that faith-wise, when becoming a mature adult and backsliding, you cannot repent? No, that is not what it means. God even accepts those who have sold their souls to Satan if they repent and return. But how much more would he wait in heartbreak for a child who really loved God and then went into the world to repent and return back to him? God is not someone who takes away the chance to repent with just the reason that we grew up. The problem is that people that backslid do not repent. The Lord gives countless chances to repent for the children who have left God. However, if they reject that and continue to live in sin, in the end, that person's conscience will be seared with a hot iron, becoming a very hardened heart that leads to a state where they can no longer repent. These people love the world and are people who have firmly decided that they will not return to the Lord again. God who has character respects the decisions of a grown person. They have lost all chances to repent and return. There is a time for repentance as well. If you miss that time, Repentance is no longer possible, and it leads to death. These people have put out the saving power of the cross. For them, the power of the blood of the Lord is nullified and no longer demonstrates any effect. Because of this, in order for these people to be saved again, Jesus has to shed his blood again and die on the cross. But this is an evil sin of disgracing God that despises the salvation given by God and crucifying him to the cross again. That is why it is written in Hebrews that those who commit this sin cannot be brought back again to repentance. 1 John 5.16 There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that he should pray about that. This is the sin talked about in this verse. Then, Hebrews is saying that repentance is possible for all sins, except for the sin that leads to death. This means that it is possible to repent for those who have compromised with the mark of the beast. I started reading Revelation 16 because the Lord put it in my heart to read it. When you look at chapter 16 verses 10 and 11, there is a part where people blasphemed God and did not repent because of their pains and sores. In the past, I read this part where it says repent, separate from the mark of the beast. This is because I myself nailed the thoughts that repentance was impossible if the mark of the beast was received. However, this time I was so glad to see the word repent. It felt like I could see a light. The Lord told me that in Revelation 16.2, those who worshipped idols and received the mark of the beast had noisome and grievous sores upon them, but I was given understanding that these sores were the same sores that are in chapter 16 verses 10 and 11, and did not separate them. That way the interpretation will be solved. All the sores that come out in Revelations are the plagues that come upon those who have worshipped the beast or have received the mark. This looks like side effects from the clear liquid. Anyway, the fact that these people who were suffering from these sores did not repent and blasphemed God, in other words, means that they could repent, but they did not. To reiterate again, as long as free will is alive for also those who have received the mark of the beast, repentance is possible. However, when the mark of the beast is completely installed in the body and the brain is taken over, that person will be in the state where they can no longer repent and will come to the sin that leads to death. 
Therefore, you must repent now. If the people who have received a clear liquid miss the chance to repent and do not get raptured, they will be left in the great tribulation and suffer from these noisome and grievous sores when the plagues start. There could be people who have a negative reaction to me saying that those who have gotten the clear liquid must repent and prepare for the rapture. Truthfully, I didn't have assurance about that. That is why I asked the Lord. Lord, in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Apostle Paul said, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I asked, However, the people who have received the clear liquid have flaws in their bodies, but can they be raptured? Immediately, the Lord emphasized the word may in the passage that Apostle Paul spoke in, and let me realize that this was a hope, not a requirement of the condition of a perfect body. In another version of the Bible, it also expresses it as, may it be so, and I pray. The Lord spoke again in my heart. He said that if God required a perfect body without blemish as a condition for the rapture, no one would be raptured. In that verse, the words may and I pray are asking for the best you can do. They are not requiring perfection. There is no one who is whole in this world, and there is no one who has a body without blemish. Presently, mankind is consuming numerous foods that harm the body and genetically modified foods processed with chemicals without even knowing. So even when our body breaks down and gets sick, we are tolerant of it. Also, nowadays, we don't know how much substances that affect the genes are found not only in foods, but also in detergents and health products. Even if you look at the product cover, you can easily find words or pictures related to genes. Nonetheless, we eat and use those things without ever even thinking in our dreams that they would damage our genes. The clear liquid directly damages our genes, but these kinds of foods and products indirectly affect our genes. Because the Lord put these things right away in my head, I immediately repented. I repented for mistakenly thinking that because I didn't get the clear liquid, my body was being kept preserved without blemish. Our spirit, soul, and body are made whole when the rapture takes place. This is what Jesus accomplishes, as spoken of in Thessalonians 5.24, and at that time, at last, our bodies will become without blemish, and then the spirit, soul, and body, which is the image of God, will all be restored. Until then, we must do our best to keep our bodies spotless. Our salvation depends on repentance, not on the damage of the physical body. Therefore, you can repent as long as you have free will, and when you repent, all spiritual conditions are restored. That is why you can be raptured. Anyway, because the Lord has illuminated this to me, I am boldly telling you that even those whose bodies have been damaged by the clear liquid can be fully prepared as a rapture bride. Also, there was one more thing I was curious about, which was when Lucifer's seal is engraved in the body, that person becomes the beast's possession, and so I asked the Lord what happens about this. The Lord told me that even mature Christians who have received God's seal can go back out into the world when they backslide, but what is so great about the seal of the beast that it can block repentant people from returning to God? In the end, no matter how much the beast's seal is engraved in the body and the programs are installed and in the state of being monitored, it cannot block repentance as long as there is free will. Because of this, to briefly summarize the key point, Repentance is possible as long as our free will is alive. Even if Lucifer's seal is engraved, genes are changed, and idolatry and the sin of defiling the temple is being done in the body, all of those cannot block us from our repentance. The only thing that blocks repentance is when the mark of the beast controls the brain and free will is lost. At that time, even though the physical body is alive, you come to a state where you can no longer repent and judgment is determined. This is more serious than the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden. At that time, Adam and Eve's spirits were dead, but the chance to repent was given to them until they died. However, the last tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is the mark of the beast, is a tool that takes away the chance to repent and determines judgment while a person is alive. Because of this, while you are still at the stage where repentance is possible, you must repent with a true heart and in the name of Jesus have your spiritual state restored. The content up until now that I have been sharing are the things the Lord has been revealing to me in the process of my grieving and lamentation. 
So for those who have seen this video, please personally ask the Lord yourself, and if you receive the same answer as this content, please let the souls that are around you, who are anxious and having a hard time, know that there is a chance to repent. And the reason I wrote this in the form of a testimony by explaining the process that I had gone through is to tell you that I did not reach this conclusion with momentary emotions or thoughts. Lastly, one thing I want to make clear is that even though there's a stage where repentance is possible even after getting the mark of the beast, if you feel reassured and compromise, I believe that kind of repentance is only formal and planned, so God will not listen to that. Those kinds of compromises can rather become a trap and shortcut to bring forth judgment quicker. Because new technology keeps coming out nowadays, just one decision may lead to the state of not being able to repent. Also, knowing that it can bring an irreversible result due to the side effects, you should not even think at all about compromising in the first place. You can avoid judgment if you keep your faith with all your life. Right now, we all must not compromise with anything and repent every day, be awakened in prayer, and prepare for the Lord's coming with all our strength. And if by any chance, because you didn't receive the clear liquid yourself, you judged or condemned even a little those who did, you must repent. Also, you must repent if even now there is a heart of contempt towards them. We are all God's children and brothers and sisters in Christ. Until Jesus comes, we are the body who needs to comfort, love, and serve each other. I pray that we all repent and overcome judgment and become victorious. I lift up thanks and praise to the Lord for revealing all these things that brought sound peace in my grieving and lamenting heart. Jesus is coming soon.